All right, let's just get to it, guys. We have a reason to keep fighting. We have a reason to live. Elden Ring just announced DLC. Now, this is, uh, aside from the Coliseum update that they put out a couple of weeks ago, it was just basically PvP stuff. This is an actual expansion coming to Elden Ring. I literally woke up at 3 a.m. and I checked Twitter because I'm a degenerate, and I saw that Elden Ring had announced a full-on expansion. This is called the Shadow of the Erd Tree, and this is a full-on expansion, like I said, and I'm sure a lot of you are wondering, when is this coming out? Uh, uh, FromSoft have not given us an official release date of this, unfortunately, and I'm sure you guys are wondering what is this going to include. While there is no official word as far as content, what we can discern from the image and also some information floating around about the game in general, we can actually take a pretty good guess as to, at least to some degree, what this is going to include. Now, from what we understand, a lot of this information is either was cut from the main game to be used as DLC or has been, you know, curated specifically for this expansion, but it's likely that we are going to be exploring the Badlands in this. And according to the leaks, this area called the Badlands is actually completely outside of the Lands Between. It's a it's an entirely separate region. And this is where Tarnished go after, you know, they lost their grace and were exiled. This is where Horalu sort of lost his title as first Elden Lord, apparently. I suppose that kind of checks out too when you look at the image. I assume this is the main land that we're going to be playing on. And that would line up with what we know. Now, as far as like actual content, content goes enemies so forth and like what we're going to be doing what's really interesting is apparently there were a lot of bosses that were cut from the main game and this is probably why there is a lot of copy paste in current Elden Ring is because some of these enemies that I'm sure they wanted for the main game they actually are going to be utilizing in DLC now this may be a generous estimate but according to the leaks uh, take this with a grain of salt but this is potentially the most exciting stuff in my opinion there may be upwards of close to 30 brand new bosses in this expansion now I actually don't think that's a crazy high estimate I, I would I would expect that that to be pretty you know close to around that and there may be even just brand new enemy types as well other NPCs etc I'm sure there's going to be you know other region specific enemies but as far as bosses go 30 brand new enemies is a lot and it's not outside the realm of possibility considering that a lot of this was probably stuff that was worked on in the well I guess what was supposed to be in the first year of Elden Ring and is now being packaged as DLC, along with a few new ones, of course. 30 doesn't sound that unreasonable to me, and it sounds amazing, to be honest. Now, as far as size of the region and everything, I actually don't know, but if you're if we're going to be fitting 30 bosses on something, it's got to be a pretty damn big playable space. Uh, when you think about the late game regions of Elden Ring, they are very small and more a traditional Souls, you know, structure, so you don't really have that kind of room to fit that many bosses on it. It'll probably be another open world segment, similar to a lot of the early to mid game stuff in Elden Ring, which is super exciting. I don't know, like, how that's going to, you know, level scale with everybody's characters and everything. It's hard to say. It may be an entirely different expansion in the sense that maybe it is scaled in some sense with your player or something along those lines. We, we don't really know for sure. But one of the really interesting things about this expansion is the fact that some of the quests that were supposed to be baked into the launch of Elden Ring are probably going to be utilized here. So there was a lot of, you know, files that were suggesting that one of the NPC's quests was involving you going into someone else's dreams and either slaying enemies or maybe fighting a certain person, etc., and I think a lot of that may carry over to this. So there's, it's it's possible that some of the NPCs that we do meet in this expansion, we go into other people's dreams and like literally fight their nightmares and so on. Like that's unbelievably exciting. Now you might be asking, if you've already beat the game, how does this relate to endings? Does this make like certain endings non-canon and whatnot? That again, right at this point is a little bit unclear, but it's probably something to the effect of like, maybe this is entirely separate to what we've done. Maybe it may not even be attached to Elden Ring, you know, the, the, the main map, as it were. This may not be attached to anything we do. Maybe it's like a prequel to, you know, the stuff that we experience in the game of Elden Ring, thus not really nullifying any of the endings or, you know, hard making them canon. We don't know exactly at this point. Again, they've left that very opaque, and that's probably a good thing in some sense. Now, this is just a theory, so once again, take this with a grain of salt, but potentially the most exciting prospect out of all of this information is the fact that the, let's say, main boss of this expansion like the the peak of this we might actually be fighting Mikola and this is Melenia's brother for those of you who are aware of her obviously and just sort of aware of the story uh, Mikola is supposed to be basically the most powerful
powerful of all of them. I understand we get his shard or whatever after killing Moog, uh, but I, I do think that to some degree, there's a reason we didn't actually fight Mikola himself. There is probably something to be said for that, and it would make sense if they were to, you know, save it for this DLC. And also, Miyazaki has not necessarily confirmed it, but I think it's entirely possible that this is not the only expansion we get for Elden Ring. I mean, like, this DLC, let's say, came out a year after the game launched. Like, you know, Elden Ring's birthday was like two days ago or something. So, like, an entire year, and they're just now dropping DLC. And I think it's possible that we see more of this uh, over the years, especially if this one is ultra successful. They have said that there's a lot more they want to do with this game, and I don't think they're done anytime soon. So, once again, while none of us have an exact date when this is coming out, maybe they don't even have an exact date at this point, but because they're comfortable enough with announcing it at least, I would assume that they're going to be releasing this or dropping it within the next, like, I don't know, a couple of months. Spring or summer is a pretty good estimate. If they have already told us, like, what it is now, I, I would assume it's not going to be too long, especially, like, when they announced the Coliseum. Didn't take too long for that to actually hit the game. So hopefully this is a pretty similar situation. But as long as this is, like, a really, you know, content-packed deal, See, I don't think a lot of us mind waiting, you know, a little bit longer to make sure that this one is extra special. And if the things that we're hearing are correct, you know, everything from the Badlands to 30 new bosses, a bunch of new enemies, you know, some new quests, etc., maybe even fighting Mikola. I mean, there's a lot to expect and, and to be excited for with this. So I'm, I'm happy to wait a little bit or just to figure out when it does release. But anyways, that's pretty much it. Hope you guys enjoyed the video and I'll see you on the next one. Peace.